Hello everyone, this is Dustin here with Steeple Hat Studios. Guess what? It's October 1st and in my part of the world it's going to snow. And not just any snow, there's going to be a blizzard overnight, right? It's October 1st and in Western Canada here, uh, the weather has decided to dump a lot of snow on us. So I'm expecting a big snowfall. So to honor this uh, 2017 snowfall, in the, in the 2017 autumn snowfall that is, I've decided to share with you guys how I make my quick and easy and cheap snow terrain, okay? I've got a little bit of a piece here that I'll show you how I've made. And uh, you just need some very simple, very cheap materials that uh, you probably already have if you're a model collector or items that you just can get very quickly and easily at a craft store or a dollar store, even Walmart will have things like that as well. So let's go look at how I make my snow. And uh, you can see here, I, I, I'm, I'm fully prepared for the snow that's coming outside and I'll be wearing this, I guess, the whole time that I do my uh, frosty tutorial here. So hopefully it doesn't get too cold and I hope you enjoy how this tutorial goes. So let's look at all of the materials and tools we need in order to build our cheap and quick terrain. The very first thing you'll want to use is some sort of base, right? I here have a oval piece of plywood. It's been cut out, it's very thin, um, it's very simple to use. Uh, I got it off of stockade.com, I bought a whole bunch of them. You can get a bunch for cheap there, there's something like 50 cents up to a dollar fifty, depending on what you get. You can use whatever kind of basing you really want though. You can use wood, um, you can use MDF board, you can use cork board, what, whatever you fancy for having on your base. You can even use cardboard if you, if you really want to. Whatever is the most inexpensive or expensive depending how you want to how want to make or how nice you want to make something. Um, obviously you also want to have paint brushes. Uh, paint brushes don't use your best Games Workshop or Citadel paint brushes. Don't use those because we are just making cheap, fast and easy terrain. So use whatever you have that's old and broken. You know your old dry brush brushes work. Cheap ones you can get at the dollar store, right? A few bucks buy a pack of them, right? Um, the next thing you want to look at is our different things and terrain we're actually going to glue on our base. Today I'm using old damaged and destroyed uh, plaster bricks that uh, I had a church one day and it fell <laughs> and it broke into pieces. So I'm just gonna take those old pieces and use them in this project. They're gonna be covered in snow so I don't really care what the edges or anything looks like. Um, I also have some, some some shapes here that have just been formed out of clay. They're like rocks, oval, whatever. I've got pieces of wood I break up sometimes. It really doesn't matter what you put. You can even go to the park and like pick stones from the earth or something like that and just glue them on if you want. We're covering the whole base in snow, so it really doesn't matter what you're gonna put up. Snow, if you wanna put like expensive skeletons or something, treasure under, go ahead, right? Another good thing that you can use, and I suggest using, is trees. Trees are always nice. These are simple trees that you can find on eBay. They are very cheap. They're gonna be like your model scale size trees for, uh, for uh, train sets and stuff like that. Um, eBay, you can find them really cheap. You can buy like five dollars, get ten of them or something like that. Just go on eBay and look around for them. After you look at your terrain and you gather terrain, obviously you want to have some sort of glue, okay? I suggest using three different kinds of glues. Um, super glue, I've got Gorilla Glue here, something like ten, eleven dollars at Home Depot for this in Canada here. Um, you can use whatever super glue you want though. I know there's some brands out there like crazy glue that's like three dollars at a dollar store. So super glue works well. Uh, I don't use a whole lot of super glue on my bases. What I prefer to use is Elmer's Pro Bond Advance. And a bottle about this big here, it's gonna cost, I think it cost me around 15 to 17 dollars, something like that, it's a little more expensive. But if you look right up here, this bonds all sorts of materials. It's very slow drying, but once it bonds, it, I find it's just the best thing to hold something together, especially like plaster, wood, whatever it is. So it takes a bit of time to dry, but it, I find it's the best to use. And it's non-toxic, it won't hurt your hands. Obviously don't eat it or anything like that. But you know, I, I, just, I just like to use it over there. It's got a nice gray color to it. The fastest option you can use is uh, glue gun glue, right? Just so go buy yourself a cheap glue gun. I think we bought this for like $4 again at a dollar store. The, um, the glue gun refill packs are again like $1.50 or something like that. And when, you, when it heats up and it comes out, it's gonna dry fast too. So whatever you're gluing down, you wanna immediately put back 
your whatever you're gluing onto a base, you want to immediately place, or else you're gonna, you know, it's not gonna stay. You're gonna get like a big ugly bump. You could even use this to make like shapes. Like if you really wanted to, you could just like draw mounds and stuff. And when it hardens, paint over it, right? So I use glue gun like I use glue gun like this for trees usually. Trees I glue on like after I prime. And here's an optional item. We're gonna have primer, right? Primer. This is really cheap primer. I five to eight dollars, depending where you get it. Uh, any Home Depot in Canada or any hardware store. Uh, primer is completely optional. I just like using it because I don't like uh, my paint to wear down really quick. But you don't have to use primer if you don't want to. So consider that after the primer is all done and on there, you're gonna want to paint stuff, right? Acrylic paints, obviously. Here's some Games Workshop paints. Don't use too much of this. This is expensive, right? You get Canada's like four to six dollars or something a pop. Even use go to Walmart and get like for two to three dollars a pop. You can buy the folk art brands there. I think it's Martha Stewart they've got there. Really cheap acrylic paints. They are not good paints. Water them down if you're gonna use them. Put so yeah, use cheap paint on your scenery stuff. If you're making it cheap and easy, don't use your expensive paint unless you're going for some like great grand look that one you want to match all your colors. I never do. I rarely use the uh, other kind of acrylics. Alright, and then after we've painted everything, we're going to go right into snow. Snow, how I make my snow, it's very simple. Again, I have a white acrylic. Use a crappy one, don't use a nice one. And I just have Elmer's school glue. It's just PBA white glue. You just mix them together, however much you want. I usually don't even measure. Um, but uh, you mix those two together, stir them up, you're gonna get a nice gooey kind of snow that you can just plop down on your base and on your uh, different terrain that you put on your base. To mix it, I always just say get a yogurt container, whatever container you want. And then another optional item, you don't have to use this, but if you want a powdery look, you can get the snow powder, model snow powder. I have uh, Woodland Scenics uh, Soft Flake Snow here. I will sometimes mix them in there and I'll show you what I do later. Um, when I mix it, but uh, the, the Woodlands Inc. So soft flake snow is again an optional item. It is a little more pricey. Um, I got it for 20.25 at a store, it says on the side there. So I don't use it a whole lot. I use it barely just because I don't want to waste so much. Anyway, let's begin and uh, start putting this uh, cheap snow terrain together. Okay, to begin, we're gonna take our base and we're gonna start gluing stuff to our base. Um, I've got some old walls here and such that were once part of a church, so I'm gonna kind of make the outline of the church. Um, obviously, whatever you were going to make, or whatever you are going to make, rather, you're just gonna want to set up kind of like, I don't know, maybe put everything down first and figure out the pattern you want. Is it gonna be a complete church, so... We'll just put them down however, whatever you think is going to look the nicest. Alright, so I'm just going to do, well, maybe put this here. Kind of more of a walkway in there. So, yeah, let's, after we've done that, we're just going to take our glue. And be generous with glue. I always think it's, on, on this stuff, you can be generous, especially if you're using glue gun glue. You want a lot to stick on there. My Elmer's is going to seep out of the side, but you know what? I don't really care because um, it's going to get covered in snow. All right, and let's just glue the clay bits on. I got a piece of wood here. Guess what? Elmer's can glue it too. And it squeezes out so fast. I don't know, glue gun, you know, with the uh, glue guns, you got to watch the heat. And then with the um, super glue, you got to watch your hands that you don't bond them together. But Elmer's, look at that. I just touch it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> touch it. Um, let's put this in the center. Maybe it's an old beam or something that fell. So there, I've got my very basic terrain already glued on. If you do not like that glue seeping out, very simply take a crappy brush and remove some of it. Wipe it off on a, an old uh, paper or paper towel, whatever you got nearby, newspaper. One thing to note if you're going to use plywood is um, plywood and thinner material. When things get uh, when you start gluing things down on them, it's going to start to bond and the whole bits of wood are actually going to bend. So later on, uh, it's, I know this is cheap terrain, but uh, if you care about this, you want to be careful because later on, this side here is going to be at an odd angle. It's not going to be flat to the surface. So when I press down on here, the other side will lift up. Some people like to have a completely flat base that's not going to bounce around when they're playing. 
Uh, that doesn't bug me too much if it's, it's if it's like something with trees or ruins on it. But if I'm doing something uh, like a like a big uh, castle or or a house or something, I will use a thicker board, MDF board or something like that, just so that the just so that it doesn't you know bend and buckle from the glue that you stick down. There's still glue down on the base here, and it's already been drying for like an hour and a half, so you can see Elmer's takes a long time to dry. You see how it's still wet? Yeah, it's still not done drying. So just to let you know, if you do use Elmer's, it will take some time to dry, 100%. So the next step I do is that I just prime it. Um, you want to go in a well-ventilated place or outside to do this. I just do it in my apartment next to the people who party, and then the smell goes to them. <laughs> so you can see here it's primed, it's tried. I missed a few spots here and there, but you know what? That's okay. If you want to be more thorough, you can just control the amount of primer yourself. But I don't really mind. You're gonna know, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there are some old uh, static grass bits on the top. I don't worry about that, I'm gonna cover it in snow. So, the very first thing that I do after I prime is I usually try and either paint the base or I'm going to glue trees that are already pre-made onto the base. So I'm going to do that right now. This is where the glue gun comes in handy. The glue gun is the fastest drying glue and I just find when I want to put a tree, especially if it's already ready, I want to put a tree on, it's just much easier to do that. So that's what I'll do right now. It's already been running. Well. Put it on, maybe right here is good. And I put on a generous amount, you want it to come out. Oh, that just squirted out quick. And now you just hold it. It's got a bit of a weird bend on the bottom, but if I hold it here for like a couple minutes, it's gonna dry fast. So let that dry and we'll go on to the next step. See, look at that. <laughs> it's already holding in shape. I'm going to film off. Okay, so the tree's already done. That didn't even take like two minutes to dry on the base there. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to add your paint to the base, all right? I am using this. It's folk art. Um, what is it? Bark brown. So it's kind of like a dark brown, kind of a tree color. It's good for a ground, it's good for a base. I usually use a dark brown or a darker gray. There's going to be a lot of snow on this base. You can see here I haven't added a lot of detail on the base, but if you're going to cover most of it with snow, you only need a few brown spots going through. Why waste all the time and effort to wait for all that sand or that flock or whatever you put on the bottom to show? It's going to be covered in snow, so I don't really mind. I got a big brush because we're just going to paint the base of it messy like. And I add lots of water to it. And then you just paint the base. Okay, so there it is. That's my simple base that I painted with this uh, bark brown oak art acrylic. Uh, as you can see, you don't need to be a skilled artist or anything. I've got the <laughs> browns overlapping all sorts of places, all sorts of color. I'm gonna be painting over them anyway, so whatever. Um, ooh, it's a lot of motorbike. So um, the folk art, the stuff I'm using says it takes about an hour to dry, so whatever you paint you're using, just let it dry completely before you go on to the next step. So my base is fully dried here, and now we're gonna paint all of the debris on top of the base. Uh, this part here, I think that you could maybe put a little more detail on it, even though it will be covered by a lot of snow, I think it's just better to have at least the debris with some point of detail. I'm going to paint it grey. Uh, I'm going to use my Citadel Dawnstone here. I normally use a different colour, but uh, for some reason I only have a steel grey in the other cheap acrylic, and I don't want my walls to look like metal, I want it to look like stone, so I'm going to use expensive paint for the walls. I don't recommend you use expensive paint, but if you really want to, that's up to you, so. so let's paint this. I'm not even going to bother thinning it out. So 
So once the stone is all dried here, I would do one of two things. I would either just jump right into dry brushing, or, this is optional, you can uh, wash it. I'm going to just use Dragonhoff Nightshade. I think it looks nice on the Dawn Stone and gives it kind of a, a, a kind of like a, a nice blue, grayish tinge. You can use whatever kind of wash you want if you do wash it, whatever you feel is the best. If you don't want to use Citadel paints and save money, just take another acrylic paint and just water it down really good. The wash has fully dried and I'm gonna just go over it with a dry brush. I'm gonna use the exact same color which is my Dawnstone. If you don't do a dry brush, or rather, yeah, you don't have to do a dry, a dry brush if you don't want to. You don't even have to wash, you could just straight up start putting snow on it. But I do like to have a little bit of detail on the uh, pieces of this debris that is going to show through to the snow. So, I'm just going to start dry brushing that there. I have finished the dry brush. I put the dry brush in on the, uh, the other debris as well. Now it's time to just add on the snow. I'm not going to worry about dry time because dry brushing, dry brushing, uh, it takes no time to dry at all. So when I make my snow, you're going to need a, like a couple things here. You're going to need your Elmer's white glue. You're going to need your white acrylic paint and you just have whatever paint you have. The cheap stuff is good. You need a little bit of water and then you want something in the mixture to hold it all together, if you will. If you just mix white glue and white paint, that'll work, but you're gonna have to use a lot of white glue for it to, I don't know, be pasty. Whereas, like, if you add something like this, I throw a bit of this in here, Woodland Scenic, um, Woodland Scenic White Snow there, the snow, the soft flake snow. That will give you kind of a gooey consistency when you mix all these three other things together, the water, the white glue, and the paint. The paint is to make sure you actually have white in your in your color, because if you don't add in uh, color, then your white glue is just going to dry clear, and uh, the water just adds uh, some flow to it, and the glue is actually what's going to dry and stick on it, right? Now, if you don't have soft flake snow, you don't have to use it, but like I said, I find that you need to use a lot of glue, and sometimes it just looks like big gooey drops. Um, I've heard that some people even just use like... Uh, baking powder. is put baking powder and mix it in there with their glue and that'll work too. I haven't tried that. I'm not going to try it. I like to use the uh, I like to use the more expensive stuff but if you don't have that you can use it without or try baking powder. Try it and let me know how that works out. Um, but yeah, but I've already mixed some here and you want to get an old brush to mix it. Looks something like this. It's gonna, it's gonna drop off here because it's all gooey. It's gonna look like this but you just take your brush you just dab it on. And I like to dab it. I don't like to spread it so much. I like to dab it. I think it looks more like a... More looks like a drift or like snow has fallen or melted a bit. It's not going to be an even kind of coverage, right? And I am quite liberal with this. I don't shy away from adding snow. I just dowage it all. So if you add too much of this, uh, if you go out and get scenic snow, the scenic soft flake snow, the woodland scenic soft flake snow, <laughs> however you say it, if you go out and get that product, you don't want to mix too terribly much in. Um, or else you're going to get a really, I don't know, it'll look powdery, and your snow will even look like it is full of holes. Sometimes that happens to me. The holes are okay, it just looks like it's been de a little bit, or, or, or like um, some rocks or something has hit it. Wait, I'm just going to dab over there. When I get to corners and stuff like that, I try not to dab too much around there, because I do want some of the brick detail to show through. On flat surfaces like this one, though, I have no issue with just covering it all. Um, but yeah, don't add too much powder, you just want enough so you can get a goo. So how do you get this much? What's the ratio for this? I, I don't really follow a ratio to be honest. I just kind of mix it until I get a consistency I like. Uh, I use a majority of white glue in this. So you can maybe try something like maybe six parts 
six parts white glue, maybe two parts of the acrylic paint, and then just one part water. You don't want to put too much water in because water will make it too runny. Even this I'm using right now it might be a little runny for what I'm used to. Oh, and in that ratio you have the white powder. Again, I don't really know how much I add. I just add a tiny amount so it's not so runny. And I just want to make it clear here. I say baking powder, baking soda. Use baking soda. I believe it's cheaper. Um, and Arm & Hammer works well. This next batch of snow that I'm gonna throw on here is using baking soda. I just mixed a bit in there just to try it out and it turned out essentially the same as adding the uh, the white snow powder. So if you want to go real che cheap, go with that. I like the Woodland Scenic stuff just because I think it's got a uh, bit of a powdery feel in it more so than the baking soda will have. But they both work out fine, so let's keep building this base. And I should point out quickly here too, when I do my basing and stuff, I always kind of go around the bottom of the walls first. And because this is recycled stuff, a lot of the walls have little cracks and areas in them that are just you now open. I just kind of push the snow in there. If some snow goes on the bricks like the side there, like I just did, whatever. <laughs> just put more on. So it looks like it's melted down or looks painted. If you don't like that painted look, just try and avoid the sides on the bricks and try and go for the top. Um, but when you're playing, some people may notice, you may notice, but for me it just seems like some snow fell down. And it's just there now. So however you like it, if you're a great artist and you want to make sure that the snow is piled up in a logical way, that's fine. Honestly, for me, the effect and the look is important. So if it's not perfect, I'm not too bothered by it. Another thing you can do is you can leave little areas. Like when I dab, you get different levels and different areas of snow, but you could like leave a little brown area in certain spots to make it look like the snow is higher in one area and lower in another. Again, it's up to you, depending on how much snow you want to cover, right? You might even want to do something like, okay, dab a snow here, dab a snow here. I see people do that too. They don't put snow everywhere, they just leave little spaces between. If you're doing that, it might be nicer to have like sand or other kind of earth under it. I, I always go for the full, as full as possible snowy look, unless I have put sand on there. You'll see on my board at the end here how I do it, but other than that, it's, it's okay to me. And with the tree, if you have a tree that has no snow on it, it's really easy. You can just dab some of this on the tree, right? And it'll match the snow that's on the ground. But I, I'm not going to do that since I have snow already on my tree. <laughs> uh, around the tree, you, again, this all depends on how realistic you want it to look. Uh, some trees, I know in Canada, the pine trees, they'll develop like a mound. And then if you dig through the mound, depending on how the wind is, you'll actually find areas without snow underneath. Other times, depending on how the wind's blown, it'll go right up into the bottom and cover the whole tree. It's all about wind and how you interpret it uh, through nature. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's all up to you, however you want it to look. If you want to go for real as possible, I suggest you just go Google some images of trees, whatever tree you're using, and try and imitate that the best you can. We got some walls here that have nothing on it. You can leave them if you want, it's up to you. But what I like to do sometimes is I like to add kind of like a melted snow or drifty snow look on the wall. And all I do with my concoction is add just a little bit more water. So when I take it off of my brush, it's gonna slide down like so. And then I just let it Watch that, see? It's just gonna slide down because the water is dragging it down. Isn't that cool? Just kinda let it fall. And it just drips like that. I think that looks really good on like rooftops and stuff. 
and the bricks it maybe not maybe won't make as much sense but yeah all you need to do is uh, if you want the thawed out looking like it's dripping on the wall look is start from the top with a little more water maybe a ratio more or so and just let it do its thing let it fall down by itself that's all there really is to it. All you have to do now is let all that uh, white glue and the white paint mixture with your stuff there dry. When it's dried, you can start using it right away. I made a bit of a mess on the uh, sides of the edges here, but um, that's okay. Uh, you can paint over it, you can chip it off, whatever you want. Now, if we go out for a closer look, you're going to see right away that because I put that powder in there, a lot of it looks a lot uh, more... It's got more holes in it, it's a little more powdery, right? And you'll see that throughout the board. I like that look because I want my stuff to look like it's um, thawing out. If you don't like that look, just add less powder. Add less baking soda or winter uh, Woodland Scenics powder, whatever you want. The only thing that uh, I don't really like on this is this stuff here. I had too much powder in my jar and you can see that the uh, dripping or thawing snow did not turn out to the consistency I wanted. If you want to have it look more like it's dripping down and not full of holes like that, you want to make it thicker, but you also want to have less powder in it, right? Um, the snow on the earth here, I think, is a better. You see how it's not, it doesn't have so much powder, it hasn't dried yet, but you want something of that effect. So just add less powder in that area there. And I just wanted to show you all guys here before I go. Just the old board that I made. Um, this is an old project. If you watch my Frostgrave games, you'll know that I played a, with my wife on a two foot by two foot board that I made with just a bunch of patched snow. There was a bunch of gravel on this and I just covered it with the snow in the exact same way that I made this right here. And you can see, maybe you recognize these from my Mordheim games, this kind of a summoning circle and this broken wizard that got damaged in some moves. And to fix them, I just decided to make them into frost grave terrain. So. And one last shot here. I just wanted to show you what it looks like on more of a cobblestone setting. I got this cobblestone mat for real cheap at a train store, but yeah, there it is. Didn't take a lot of money, or wouldn't take a lot of money, um, if you don't use the snow powder that I used. And quick and easy. All ready to game with. And of course, if you don't want to um, have so much snow on it, you can just put less snow on. You can put it more haphazardly, have splotches, or do what I do and just cover the whole thing. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that uh, you can take something away from it and it makes terrain building easier, quicker, and cheaper for you. If you have any questions or if you have... Uh, any comments you want to leave me, just leave them in the comment section down below. Um, if you have ways that you make snow, please share them with me. I'd love to know too and try them out. This just to me just seems like the fastest and, and quickest way for good and um, usable results. So, I'm out. Uh, please uh, like this video and subscribe if you want to see more content in the future. Appreciate it and we'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.